can't get out, but it's under supervision. No. No. Neither does Jim. Come on, ladies, stay still. <laughs> this wood is kind of wet. Uh, the tree itself, I think, was cut down a week ago. And this was cut off last night from it. I have no idea how close the center that is. It doesn't matter. It will be round. It probably will not be. Clunk, clunk, clunk. See how off balance it is? The machine is wanting to walk away. So we take off the stuff to smooth it. Using a spindle roughing gouge to do this, this tool is not recommended. In fact, if you did use it on something like a plate or a bowl, you're looking for more trouble than you could imagine. These can break. I've heard about it. Because the mounting point on this tool is a lot smaller than the diameter and the size of the cutting edge. And it only has one purpose, working along the grain, not going into the end. I think now I can turn it up. So you're just getting that bark off and making this cylinder more symmetrical. The speed can be increased and it's running smooth. Now we think that this is Bradford Pear. Somebody says persimmon, somebody says Bradford pear. I know it's not cedar or walnut. <laughs> now, hey, I want, I want to solve the, the query here. Were there persimmons in that pile of cut up wood? Yeah. Were they attached to the tree that you cut? Yeah. Then it must have been persimmon or it was a double. I've, I've never seen persimmon on a Bradford pear. Well, Bradford pear can create, you know, it's genetic cloning. <laughs> they can do that now. Use the rootstock of the Bradford pear and put a persimmon on it. This smells nice. Okay, to make a goblet, something like this, you can't really turn it in between centers because you can't dig it out. So I'm going to make a tenon on this end. Put it on the other chuck. Squeeze it up tight. This is wet wood. It will com continue compressing even through the turning. A seed. Like uh, mustard seed or what? Will that tell me the day of the week, too? Again, a skew can do other things. This wet wood cuts nice. Now, template, a bit too big. That should fit.
What's going in the trash can? Half the fittings on the table, exactly. That's what I mentioned a little while ago. Now the chuck in place, this piece is locked in. Bring the tail back up just for stability because I got a lot of material hanging off the end of this tool. And I want to create the bowl end of it first. Leave all the mass you can at the tail end. If you create the stem first, and you've got a lot of weight hanging off here, it's not going to stay for very long. It'll snap. Let's see, maybe a short bowl part, maybe a longer stem. And you just make your own shape, unless you have a pattern you have to follow. But be sure you get permission. Right, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, eh? You betcha. Yeah, with this big roughing gouge, you can knock bark off and also make angel hair. Works nice on wet wood. This big walnut goblet standing here by itself took me about three hours to make the material so old and dry. I need to work around this end. Just soften the edge. And right here I want to make a little recess to put a drill bit. Without throwing this off the chuck. That's the tricky part. Wrong way. No, I need to make something now to receive the drill bit. No, I'm using the drill bit just as a depth stop, a depth guide. It also gives me a small opening to work with. Okay. Something like that. You come out of the way. Drill bit. We'll get inserted here. There's not much to hold on to with this right now, but if you put it into a chuck, a drill chuck, you can get a hold of it. And if it behaves, it won't knock you off your feet. Come on now. I think it's being nervous right now.
If you can't go with a drill bit, I'll use this detail gouge. Come straight in. It'll work like an auger bit, similar to what you would use to drill a hole for ice fishing. A spoon bit. Straight in on the center. You want to figure how deep you're going to go. Because that makes a difference too. And just back it out, clear the bed. If I've determined that this will be the bottom of the bowl part, put a mark on here. Green will be my stopping point. Then this same tool I'll use for scooping out the inside of the bowl. Make the stem and clean it off the lathe. If this piece flies off the chuck, it'll stay where it lands. This part of the demo will be over. Because there's no way of other things you want to go over. Like the raffle. Show and tell. Any other questions while I'm trying to dig this out? No. Okay. Is anybody not awake? You are not awake. Good. See how nice that's coming off? On this one, if you turn it to your finished dimension, you can leave it and hope it doesn't warp out. Um, from my bowl turning, I'm using green wood and I'll leave them sit for maybe up to four months at least after roughing out. But if the pieces turn thin, or let's say, even better, you have uniform wall thickness, and you do not have the pith of the wood incorporated into the piece, it should, I think, dry off a bit more uniform. Did I lie? Sounded good, all right. Whatever this stuff is, is creating a bit of a residue on the tools. That persimmon juice. You're getting near the seat. I must be, yeah. <laughs> Mike, if that's a branch, don't you have the piss running right down the center? Yep, yeah, I do. And is that going to cause a drying problem? It might. Okay. But it's fireplace time. This is just a demo. It's not intended to be kept. If it keeps, good. If not, well... It's all on how you see it, Carl. This tool has a limitation. Once it gets too far off the tool rest, it's not very sturdy. And it makes noise. Like that. And where's my green mark? Come on. Right about there is as deep as I'm going. I might check the chuck, Larry. You could chuck the check. That took a little twist. That's in place. Tannin is still in one piece. This tool here is a, uh, I think it's a carbide tip, a ring cutter. 
by the Hunter Tool Company. This is, except for the handle, this was the tool that the club had on silent auction at the beginning of this year, or was it the year before? I don't remember. I ended up winning it, having to make a handle for it, and trying to use it. Was sometimes not successful. Maybe it was me. It might have been the wood, the application. Come on, donut, get out of the way. And you're in the wrong place. This one. I want to see inside this thing. This can be very grabby if you put it in the wrong way. Now the truck is fine. Everything else has moved. Chuck, check. Okay, Larry. These tools are just rattling around on me. I have to remember, too, the weight that I have at home is almost 900 pounds. It doesn't dance very much. a noisy one. I think what's causing some of this is the amount of wood hanging off the truck. Maybe the way I'm holding the tool. That's almost aggravating. Go back to what I had. Squealing or thumping, I don't know which is better. Are you getting that on the microphone? I think something isn't right. I'm not sure what it is. Ernie, I think you've made some goblets in the past. Hey, Mike, look at the end of that. It looks like John does on the top. Oh, yeah. It's a textured bottom. I'll leave that there. Let's get the stem and take it off. Where is Ernie? Well, you've made goblets in the past. Right here. And that end grain. Yep. And then that. That's what's thumping me up. Yep. Oh well, I'll leave it there. I'm glad somebody was paying attention. And when you actually make a goblet for real, and you make the bowl part first, inside and outside, nice and shaped, exactly how you want it. Stop the lathe, move everything out of the way, and get your sanding material out and sand that piece. Because if you shape the whole thing and you try to sand this now with the stem this small, it might snap. Leave as much bulk here as you can. Sand all that off, and then shape this and sand it till you get to the very end of it, and then finish it. I'm going to finish that off the lathe, obviously, because it's not on there now. And I think I like this one. Oh, you're creeping.
Man's will creep, yep. It's not as bad as Banjo Droop. Okay. There's some this way. This could all be done with spindle gouges. I prefer to use a bowl gouge. I'm just more comfortable with them. And you can make the stem as plain or as ornate if you like, with different beads and coves and other weird shapes on it. You can texture it, make a thicker stem, you can flute it. Denver did a good demo here a couple of times for the club with a attachment he made for his lathe for running flutes. Yeah. Banjos and flutes and lions and tigers. Now, that was a bit of a mistake. Let's see what happened. I got sidetracked answering back, Larry, and you see, that's what happens when you don't know your alphabet. What's the first three letters of the English alphabet? A, anchor the tool on the tool rest. B, let the bevel contact the wood before you try to use the letter C, which is cut. I just went straight in and mashed that up. If it was over here, it would have broken the rim. So pay attention to what you're doing. Never mind the guy with the camera system. And I think what's different about making these plates and goblets, it's something that everybody could use every day like a pen. It can be as plain or ornate as you like. Realize though that the more texture you put, the more awkward it's going to be to keep clean. But if you sell it, that's not your concern. Actually, I could make this look like the Stanley Cup. It's coming up in a few months. That's related to hockey, eh? Which happens up in the Great White North. You get many? I'll have to come back in on that. Get a good bite. How high can you reach? Imagine five lays like this at the fair when we're turning green wood. We got ribbons going 50 feet. Always go from the high point to the low point when you're doing this type of turning, which is going downhill, which gives you a cleaner cut. And if you look at the head of the bowl of this, ga of this goblet, it's not running very straight right now. Which tells me something isn't lined up. So it's time to take this off the lathe pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, well, it's been... Now, it may have shifted a bit on the truck. I don't know for sure. I was at a, one of the wood turning symposiums that the AAW puts on. I think it was Kansas City. I watched some of the one demonstrator, he did something with wet wood and he had ribbons going 50 feet. And then that piece that he worked on, he hollowed it out 
with the lights shut off in the uh, demo room. He did it in the dark because he had a light on the inside of the workpiece. And that was his depth thickness gauge. He saw the same luminescence, luminescence coming through. He knew he had a uniform wall thickness. Rather interesting. I've never had the nerve to try it. And I think this will be close to the last tweaking there. A short stem. Okay, prepare to take it off. Get all this out of the way. See, you can stop a lathe. Too aggressive. You actually get better cuts if you take it easy and have a sharp tool. Little thin ribbons. not Terry and I thought about that because in the bottom of these goblets I, I just have written free-handed my uh, signing sheet and my concern trying to put a jam chuck in there is you're putting a lot of force now on the stem here it's just being held at this end and can flop around if you put too much force in it I think it might snap You're overhead getting this? Yep. Good. I'm using a narrow parting tool and I'm undercutting the foot. Same idea as a plate and a bowl. You don't want to have an absolutely flat bottom. You want a slightly concave. So the piece will just stand on its rim. Unless you make a bowl that's purposely made with a round bottom so it can wobble on a table. Those are fun. And this gets a little bit dicey here because you want to have this free and clear without having the piece fly off and smash on the concrete floor. What I've done with this bigger walnut, see all that going crazy over here? I made a wide parting area, took it down to about pencil size, shut off the lathe and used a uh, very fine saw and cut it. Left about an eighth of an inch or whatever it was still attached to the base of the goblet and just sanded the daylights out of it. And after this is all done we'll probably take a short break I think. You're welcome to come up and look at the pieces I've already done and maybe catch a goblet as it flies off. I still have a little bit of crud here.